up, Jamar here, Vegas Sense. New video here. In this particular video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be giving my little top 10 list here of, I would say, some of the best bang for your buck value oriented scents that you can find uh, right now. Um, some are clones. I would say about half of these are clones and then half of them are uh, original creation. So uh, I definitely want to get started here. So first up um, is going to be a Fratcom favorite, I would have to say. And this is definitely one of the best fragrances ever created. Um, and that's going to be Versace Pour Own. And you see here the presentation in this bottle is second to none. This is definitely one of the best looking bottles in the game. Um, and I would say probably always will be. It's a really simplistic yet modern looking, just really elegant design. And it really, it, it makes the, the I would say it makes the fragrance look expensive, honestly. Uh, but it's really not. You can get this fragrance for about $30 on eBay. And just basically going over the way it smells, this fragrance has a very sharp uh, blast of bergamot and lemon and the rolly up top. And then it dries down to a nice creamy musky scent with the use of tonka bean and musk. This really works in high heat situations where you're gonna be expecting to sweat a lot uh, or be in the sun a lot. And it's extremely aromatic and women definitely love this scent. So one bad thing about this particular scent is you will need to respray it if you plan on wearing it throughout the day. So definitely maybe carry around a, a decant of this stuff but otherwise, this is definitely one of the best scents created, hands down. Next up is Nautica Voyage. You all have all heard of this particular fragrance. Nautica Voyage is definitely, it's a, another cheapie, and as a matter of fact, it's definitely the cheapest fragrance that I own right now. I believe I paid about $13 for this particular fragrance. And even though it's that cheap, it is still one of the best performing and best smelling fragrances that I own. So the opening notes are green leaves and apple, and this gives the fragrance a cucumber-like smell. Uh, it's extremely fresh and smooth, and once it dries down, it dries down to a slightly woody, but yet musky type of scent. The scent definitely performs really well on me, um, I usually get over eight hours whenever I uh, spray this fragrance on. I do tend to go a little bit heavy on the trigger, so normally about, you know, at least eight sprays or so, but it doesn't seem to ever get overbearing or cloying or anything like that. This is a very light, aromatic type of scent. Um, this is also a really, really huge compliment getter from women. I haven't met not one woman that didn't like the, the smell of this scent. And honestly, this is, this is a steal of a fragrance, I would have to say, especially for how cheap it goes for on you know sites like eBay or other great market sites. Don't let the price of this stuff fool you. This is definitely another I would say maybe best scent ever, um, for sure. So again, this one is Nautical Voyage. Next scent is the newest scent that I just purchased. And this one is gonna be Guerlain's Lone Ideal Cologne. And I had seen this fragrance a while back. Uh, I really, I, I guess you could say the whole Guerlain EDL Loam uh, or Loam EDL uh, line. And this particular fragrance, I, I kind of shied away from it. Number one, because it said it was a cologne. So I figured it probably wouldn't last as long, um, even though it is an eau de toilette co uh, concentration. But the main thing that steered me away from it was the fact that uh, all of the Loam EDL line has almond in it. 
and I didn't really know how almond would smell in a scent that's supposed to be a freshy type scent. But man, have I been, I guess, pleasantly surprised. Um, this is definitely one of the best openings, uh, I would say, that I've smelled in a long time from a fragrance. Um, it, it definitely, it opens up with a really zesty uh, and fruity opening with notes of mandarin orange, bergamot, grapefruit, and pink pepper. And you definitely, you smell a lot of the mandarin orange and the grapefruit kind of mixing in together. Um, then you start to get some of the neroleum musk smoothed out by uh, the almond note in the fragrance. The almond note, I wouldn't say is a large factor or a large part of this fragrance, but it is definitely something that smooths it out just a bit, all right? So as far as what this actually smells like, or I guess what I could compare it to, I do sort of get a little bit of Dior Homme Sport, just a little bit, um, especially in the opening, I would say. As far as longevity goes on this, this one is about average or so. Um, I sprayed this one on me at around three o'clock, I would say, and I mean, it's still there. You definitely smell it more when it heats up though, um, you know, if you go outside. So definitely, if you're gonna wear this one, make sure that you're outside to let it warm up. All right, so again, that one is your lines. Loam EDL Cologne. All right, so the next scent is, I would say, definitely one of my most beloved hot weather scents, um, especially for extreme heat. So I'm talking like 90 to 100 plus degrees. Um, and this stuff performs like a beast. It really does. And I'm talking about Rasasi Hawash. So as you can see, it's a beautiful bottle, completely see-through, transparent. The juice inside is purple. And it's got this really heavy, uh, really quality made cap with like a snake that kind of goes around the top of it. It's a really, really great presentation on this bottle. And again, it performs great. This is definitely what Invictus Aqua should have been or should have smelled like especially considering all the hype that Invictus Aqua got and the fact that it came out after this particular fragrance did. So the best way to describe Hawass is it's a summer fragrance that's really sweet. Uh, it's youthful, yet more grown up than Invictus Aqua. Uh, it's aquatic, yet spicy, and it's fresh yet a heavier summertime fragrance, I would say. So even on the hottest day, I still get about 10 plus hours with this fragrance. And that's even with me being outside for most of that time and, you know, obviously sweating the whole time. So if you're ever coming out here to Las Vegas in the summertime, definitely make sure that you have this cologne with you you won't be you won't be disappointed at all um big plus with this one as well is women absolutely love this one as they do you know invictus aqua and invictus as well all right so again rasasi hawas next one is another new fragrance that i just picked up here and um this one is english laundry's riviera so Riviera is classified as an aromatic spicy fragrance. And when you first spray this on, you're invited with a nice citrus blast, I would say. So it's not overly sharp in the opening. Um, you know, you, you don't, it doesn't sting your nose when you spray this on. It's actually quite creamy. And the dry down, I would say, is definitely the strong point of this fragrance drives down to a really creamy uh, yet s slightly spicy scent in my opinion. Uh, the mid and base notes include lavender, ylang ylang, mandarin orange, nutmeg, black pepper, sandalwood, as well as many other notes uh, that are in this fragrance. 
I really think this is a really versatile scent that can be worn in any occasion, except anything other than something, you know, super formal or classy. So I, I wouldn't wear this with like a suit and tie, but definitely just, you know, casually chilling around the house, going out. This is definitely a, a great scent. And I would say it, it does pretty good in the heat. So in the, the spring and summer. All right, so again, this one is English Laundry's Riviera. So the next scent, this one was definitely a love at first sniff for me. And this one is Alexandria Fragrances Deep Blue. So Deep Blue is their take on uh, Mason's, Mason Francis Kirkshans uh, Aqua Celestia. And this one has notes of bergamot, black currant, mint, mimosa, rose, and musk, as well as others. Um, but those are the main players in this particular scent. And this is an amazing take on an aquatic scent, in my opinion. Um, although this is a unisex scent, it does lean a little bit towards the feminine side. So some people will definitely be turned off by that. Um, however, I really enjoy this scent. Uh, it, it honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't seem too feminine to me. I have had even women say that it does smell feminine, but I mean, that's okay. I'm definitely uh, secure in myself. So I have no problem with wearing this whatsoever. Um, and it, the other thing is it, it, it definitely it lasts a long time. So I get at least about eight to 10 hours with this. So this will definitely last an entire work day. And it leaves behind an amazing sillage, especially in the heat. Uh, my sister actually wore this when she came out here a few weeks ago, uh, out here to Las Vegas. And I let her uh, spray this on her. We went out looking at some houses and the whole time I, I could smell her, whether it be in the car or just walking around the houses, you know, she was definitely leaving behind a nice scent trail with this one. Uh, and it definitely smelled good on her as well. So this one is definitely something that, you know, if, if you definitely, if you like aquatic sort of minty type uh, fragrances, absolutely pick this one up, okay? So again, this one is Deep Blue by Alexandria Fragrances. Next scent, this one, I've used a lot of this scent already. This is probably one of my favorite scents right now, just period. And that one is Home Classique by Alexandria Fragrances. This is their take on YSL Lone. Uh, it's a, a lighter and fresher take, I would say, on loan. Now, just because I'm saying that it's a lighter take on it doesn't mean that it performs worse because it performs 10 times better than YSO Loan does. This one lasts at least over 10 plus hours on me and it uses a, a heavy emphasis on ginger and that's throughout the entire fragrance. Ginger is definitely one of my favorite notes in a fragrance. And I love the fact that this particular fragrance, it really emphasizes that note a lot. All right, so if you're looking for, I guess a clone to sort of, you know, supplement, you know, your YSL loan cravings, this one, it's, it, it, honestly, to me, it's a replacement for it. Um, it. It's definitely, again, it smells better, in my opinion, than why it's so long. It lasts much longer, and obviously, it costs much less, all right? Alexandria Fragrances, Home Classique. Next fragrance, a lot of you all know it, and that one is Zion from Alexandria Fragrances. This is their take on Roja's Elysium. This one, I would say, if you're comparing this one to Roja Elysium, if Roja Elysium could run the 400 meter race, 
this one could do the 1600 and still have gas in the tank. This one is definitely a beastly performer. Um, when comparing it to the Rosa Elysium, it definitely, it lasts a lot longer. Um, and it pretty much gives you almost the exact same smell as Rosa Elysium. The only difference that I get with this one is it has just the slightest bit of, of you know, I guess additional greenness, uh, I would say in the opening of this fragrance. But once it gets to its actual dry down, this smells identical to Roja Elysium in the, in the dry down. And I would say the fact that it lasts at least 12 plus hours on skin and pretty much until you wash your clothes, you know, if you spray it on your clothes. This one for it costing just a fraction of the price of Roja Elysium is definitely the better buy. So definitely go and check this one out, Alexandria Fragrances, Zion. All right, and then the last fragrance that we have here is also from Central Obsessions, and this is their interpretation of uh, Creed's Pure White Cologne. So Creed's Pure White Cologne, man, I mean, it, it's the, just the name of it, it sounds like something that I would like, you know, pure white cologne. It, it definitely is a really, really fresh, just absolutely beautiful scent. Uh, it opens up with a nice sweet pear in the opening. And then you also, you get some citruses thrown in there as well, uh, such as the bergamot, lemon, and grapefruit. Now there are some florals in this scent as well. And just smelling this off of the cap, I would say you do sort of get the, the florals in this as well. However, you don't really get that, I would say, too much when you're actually wearing this scent. It's definitely, it's not like a powdery scent at all. It's definitely more of, a, I would say, like a fresh aromatic type scent. At least the Central Obsessions version is. Um, and I would say for the most part in the dry down, you do sort of get the pear the whole way through. So, you know, it gives it like a fruity element, but it's just a really fresh musky type scent. So, you, you know, it definitely, it has musk in the note breakdown and you do sort of get like a, a ambergris type smell as well. So I would say this could work in any situation that's in the daytime, um, you know, whether it be a formal occasion, work, casual, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you wear this in the daytime, you're great. And the longevity on it is pretty average. I would say it's about seven hours. All right, so that's my little top 10 list here of best bang for your buck fra fragrances. Um, surprisingly, all of these fragrances, you can all, you can get all of them uh, for under $60. With really the most expensive fragrances uh, being some of the Alexandrias, uh, as well as the Rosaski Vavas. But honestly, this goes to show you that, you know, you really don't have to spend over $100 uh, or really over $60 to smell great. You really don't. So definitely go and check all the fragrances out if you don't have any.